emerging mysteriously from the undergrowth, and then ever so politely bringing with it the stench of death to your garden, is the stinkhorn fungus. They're unlike other mushrooms who release their spores far and wide. These rely on flies. There are some big questions we plan on tackling with this today. Can you eat it? Is it actually medicinal like some people suggest? And why, for goodness sake, does it stink so bad? Today I want to introduce you to the most wonderful and exceedingly bizarre mushroom. It is appropriately in the genus Phallus, for obvious reasons, I suppose. It is definitely the most phallic looking of the mushrooms. <laughs> they start as small eggs and grow into full grown mushrooms in the most unusual of ways. Then after they've spread their spores, they fall back down to the earth and disappear again. I also wonder if our modern view of them is changing from how our ancestors may have seen them. What does it look like to you? Like a potato on a stem. That's what it looks like, a potato on a stem, huh? Their shape has led them to be used as medicines, seen as aphrodisiacs, and even in the case of Darwin's daughter, seen as repulsive garden intruders that needed to be burned. Yep, that's a true story, and I can confirm they do burn. But we are dealing with none other than that of the stinkhorn. So in just a few minutes, if you hang tight, you'll have a solid understanding of a mushroom that you can eat if done right. And you'll have a whole new perspective on an entire group of mushrooms that you may have only just heard of. And that is also where I started, of course. I knew what a stinkhorn was, but I rarely see these gems of the forest. Yet they popped up in my yard. That to me is a sign. And so I set up many time lapses. It's raining. I hope it stays protected. I did four in total, which I'll share with you here today. And I'll point out some interesting aspects of their growth when I show them to you. This moisture will help the mushrooms that are in that time lapse grow. <laughs> so that kind of made me an expert having spent so many nights in the backyard watching them. And of course, I wanted to introduce everyone in the family to them. Ah, there's mushrooms here. Oh, that's a stinkhorn mushroom. Gross. It's like a dessert cake. I know. First things first, this specific stinkhorn is called the Ravenel stinkhorn. There are currently 77 species in the stinkhorn family though. Ravenel stinkhorn is the most common in the Eastern United States. But the common stinkhorn, which you can see looks just a little bit different, is the most common in Europe. So many of the legends and the knowledge we have from them came from this one and other more tropical species can be colorful and sport elaborate veil-like membranes. I mean, if this isn't amazing to you, I, I really don't know what is. Although maybe the most impressive and memorable thing about them is the smell. It definitely smells terrible, but I had a hard time describing exactly what it smelled like, so I had the family give a stab at what they thought about it. Oh, it smells so bad. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's it like the more it stays, the more rancid it is. It's like, yeah. Oh man, I mean, I mean, it does smell like, like Bradford pear, but more like rancid than that. The smell comes from the gray gleba here. It's a gooey mix of mucus and spores. This stinky smell is used to attract none other than the fly. They crawl around on the sticky surface, getting it all over their feet and apparently ingesting the spores which travel through the fly's gut and are then excreted elsewhere. And they germinate and they create another fungal colony somewhere else. But the full grown mushrooms are so incredibly foul smelling that I don't think you'd ever want to eat them even if you could. Yet the eggs, commonly called witch's eggs, are edible, or so I thought. This is a good chance to talk about the edibility of this mushroom. There's no way I'm putting Ew. this in my mouth. <laughs> Look how shriveled. The conclusion, the full grown mushrooms are terribly foul smelling. So even though they are potentially edible, meaning they're not poisonous, they're just not that much fun to put near your mouth. So a discussion of edibility needs to start with the egg. See right here, you can see the eggs coming up. Oh, wow. So These gonna, are the witch's eggs? Yeah, actually, there's three right there. See if there's any anywhere else. Let's see. Oh, here's one. The witch's eggs are edible, right? Yeah, I think so. So those should look be edible. Look at this one. It, look how purple they are when they come up. No, it's like it's a little thing like this. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh cool. gosh, it's like spongy. Is it? 
Oh, wow. Look at all that juicy stuff on there. Oh, my gosh. Whoa. I was not expecting this. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. This bit here is in the middle. This is the stock, which is going to expand. And then this right oh. here is the um, where all the spores are. We're going to test our first stinkhorn mushroom here. Do you want to try it with me? I think maybe you just see how it goes. I can note right now that it is extremely gooey. So I'm going to save this one. So I will take the... <laughs> See? Off of it. Oh. Oh. Hmm. Not bad. I just want to see what it tastes like. Mmm. Mmm. It tastes a little bit like... Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut out the white stuff. So the spores and the cap is in this gooey bit here. I'm gonna leave that to the side. That's the gleba. This is the stalk, which is now dense. Hmm. It tastes a little bit like a radish. Yeah. You can try it. Tastes like something I would put in a stir fry. It's not too bad. Also, these mushrooms are extremely powerful. According to a study, they can push upwards with a force of 1.33 kilonewtons per meter squared, which means three of these mushrooms can lift approximately 400 kilograms. Now for what I always wanted to know, is it medicinal? It seems like almost no studies have been done specifically on the Ravenel stinkhorn, but it has been done on the common stinkhorn. A recent study suggested that extracts from this one can reduce the risk of venous thrombosis. That's blood clots in veins, which are a common cause of death in breast cancer patients. Essentially, they seem to reduce the incidence of platelet aggregation. It's also a medieval cure for gout, and it was used as a love potion. Now, if you are gonna take natural medicines, one of the things you have to understand is that even if there are compounds in here that show promise, there are tons and tons of other chemicals, and you wanna make sure that none of them cause a bad reaction in your body. Unfortunately, when they tested this mushroom in vitro, meaning when they tested it in the lab in a test tube, they found evidence that they shortened the telomeres and caused DNA damage particularly reducing men's fertility. All of that to say, I wouldn't use it for your libido, and I wouldn't start eating these for medicinal purposes. So maybe just eat them in moderation. <laughs> I'll leave the articles in the description if you wanna read more, especially if you're concerned. Now to dig this up, and we're gonna put it in a pot, and we're gonna time lapse it. I wanted to see if I could bring it into the studio, and that is a much more difficult task. Here you can see I just scooped up the egg, and alas, it was an experiment, and it worked. As you watch this mushroom emerge, I want you to think about the fact that we as humans have seen these pop up around wood piles for millennia. You can only imagine what crazy thoughts and meanings our ancestors put to these occurrences. But unlike them, we couldn't see how they grow via time lapses. They didn't have full access to the latest science, and they likely had almost no idea how and why they emerge from the depths. But we live in a fantastic time where we can look at them and we can appreciate this otherworldly fungus known as the stinkhorn. I now have something for you to try this summer when it's hot and humid out there, and that is to go into the forest and start smelling. If you smell a putrid smell, then I encourage you to look around for that stinkhorn. You'll probably find it in a whole bunch of decomposing wood, uh, wood chips, something like this. That's where they're found. And if you do look around, you might find some witches' eggs. You can dig them up and eat them. And then you can let us know in the comments below how you think they taste. I didn't want to leave though before thanking my patrons who really allow me to make these videos interesting and watchable. If you want a copy of our signed book, I do that for patrons too, so go over there and check it out. Oh, I'm there, so bitten! Is there an ant on my left hand right now? Um, there are a whole bunch of ants on your hand. Oh my can you, gosh! Can you get them off real oh, quick? Oh, there's so many. Can you get them off? Well, there's like, they're, oh, to, you gotta get, 